Hi everyone, today we will be discussing two important big data architecture patterns namely Lambda and Kappa along with their variants. And finally, we will compare these two. So let's get started. So let me first draw out the layers that will remain constant for all the patterns that we will be discussing today. These layers are data sources, data storage, big data governance and data consumption. I have explained these in my introduction to big data video. Please do check it out if you are an absolute beginner and want to know about these layers before getting into the patterns. A Lambda pattern has both batch and real time processing. It can actually be considered as a combination of two systems. On the other hand, Kappa architecture adoption of which has increased rapidly over past few years eliminates the need of batch altogether by focusing on real time processing only. We will begin discussing with three Lambda architecture patterns, first variant being batch only serving layer. In this, there is a batch layer which ingests data and computes values followed by a dedicated serving layer to where computed outputs of the batch layer are written. The consumption layer reads from the serving layer. Like discussed earlier, a Lambda architecture is a combination of batch and real time processing. The real time processing is enabled via what is known as a speed layer. In the first variant, the speed layer ingests, computes and produces output to be directly utilized by the consumption layer. The second variant of Lambda is what we are calling a dedicated serving layer. Here, just like serving layer for batch, there is a dedicated serving layer for a speed layer as well. The final Lambda pattern variant that we can have combines both the serving layers of batch and speed into one common layer which caters to consumption layer. Now let's discuss Kappa pattern. Here the real time processing is done using a stream layer which outputs the computed value to a dedicated serving layer. This output is then used by consumption layer. As you can see the batch processing is eliminated in Kappa architecture. Finally, we will discuss key differences between both these patterns. When it comes to adoption from a traditional or legacy system, Lambda architecture is easy to adopt as most of the ETLs can be reused or ETL modules even used as it is for batch processing side of things. On the other hand, a Kappa architecture would require a system to be built ground up, most likely using a new tech stack altogether. That's what also makes a Lambda architecture easier to implement than Kappa. When it comes to maintenance, a system built on Lambda architecture is not easy to maintain as you are basically maintaining two different systems. That is one for batch processing and the other one for real time. On the other hand, system built on Kappa architecture is relatively easier to maintain. When it comes to performance, Lambda architecture performs quite well. This is because it has access to complete data and has the capa capability and time to optimize unlike a Kappa architecture which is entirely on stream processing. Kappa architecture has many open challenges such as event duplication, order of event processing etc. which can reduce its performance. Please note that we are not comparing speed to deliver the end result here but the response times of a particular pull. Next comparison factor is resource requirements such as CPU, memory, etc. A system built on Lambda architecture requires more resources than a system built on Kappa architecture. Next, next factor to compare is code or module duplication. Since Lambda architecture has both batch and real time capabilities, it is very likely that same code needs to be written twice. On the other hand, the duplication is minimal in Kappa architecture. And finally, the last factor is use cases. Lambda is used when there is requirement to retain the data typically for regulatory or analytical purposes. On the other hand, Kappa architecture is well suited for use cases that 
use online data or where the trusted data sources are available online. So that's all in this video. If you would like to see more topics covered on big data, do let me know in the comment section which ones. If you like this video and had a good learning experience, then do check out other videos. Do like and share. Also subscribe the channel for latest videos and trends in the world of technology and architecture. See you in the next video.